Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jamel Gibbs, your family-oriented entrepreneur. Welcome to another podcast episode. This is the Business and Investing Podcast, where you learn all things business and investing related. Now, one of the key things that we do on this show is we talk about real estate investing and how you can take your business from nothing to growing an incredible business in a relatively short period of time. And sometimes we have guests that have been doing this for you know, 20, 30 years like myself. I've been in the game for over 20 years at this point. But then we'll have guests who have been doing it for a handful of years and even less than a year, and they're absolutely crushing it. And our special guest falls right within that category. Uh, he's been investing uh, as a creative real estate investor and a wholesaler, which are right up my alley. And um, guess what? He's been doing this for nine months. And within his first nine months, in fact, last week, he just uh, hit the nine month mark. He closed 40 deals. So right in the midst of the, uh, you know, at the end of, of the pandemic, uh, during a time where people are talking about inflation and, you know, all, you know, the market is going to crash and, you know, there, there's a huge crisis in real estate. We have someone who's brand new to the business in his own regard, and he closed 40 deals this year. So while everybody else is screaming, you know, uh, the red coats are coming, <laughs> he's killing it right now. And that's exactly why I wanted to have him on the call. So a lot of you guys can relate to his, his personal situation, right? You can relate because you're looking to get started investing in real estate. You're looking to build a business. He's at a point right now, we, we were literally just talking about this, where he's trying to automate everything in his business at this point and really do bigger deals. He's nine months in, nine months. So what were you doing nine months ago that would have allowed you to get to the point where he is in his business? What haven't you done? And we're going to talk about some of the differences, his mindset. We're going to talk about uh, some of what he's done and what you haven't done. And it's not to point fingers at you in general, but there's certain things that allowed him to get 40 deals done in his first year, right? So we're going to talk about what he's done so you can know what you're doing or what you're not doing and to be able to compare yourself to his business so that you can do the same exact thing. This business is not hard. You have to follow the basics and you have to take action, massive action. And once you do that, you'll see things get easier and easier over time. Now, our special guest, he had me on his podcast as well. I'm going to make sure I link it for you guys. It's, it's called the uh, uh, it's called the origin story. But I had his business partner on a couple of weeks ago. You, you might have uh, seen that episode a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about his business partners, uh, his, his podcast partners, uh, story as well. And I wanted to bring Sam on so that you guys can get a feel for where he is in his business. I know you guys are going to benefit from this. I mean, literally less than nine months, 40 deals crushing it. And you guys, there's no, there's look, Sam did it. You guys can do it as well. So we're going to get into all of this stuff. We're going to talk about how you guys can incorporate, implement what Sam's doing in order to get yourself to 40, 50. What, what's your goal for this year as far as deals, Sam? Ooh, as far as deals, we got another four months left to go in this year. And um, honestly, there's no reason at the scale that we're moving at where I shouldn't be able to hit at least 80. 80 deals. Uh, so that, you're talking another 20 deals per month for the next four uh no, 10 deals per month for the next four months, right? Yep. Killing it, man. That's what I'm talking about. So, look, Sam Singh. Sam Singh. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, my brother? Well, I, I need to first say thank you so much for having me on. It's, it's an absolute honor. You came onto our podcast, and I don't know that I've resonated so much with someone's message before. And the fact that you've branded yourself the family-oriented entrepreneur is something that is so... It's maybe been missing from the world of entrepreneurialism. And 
And it's unfortunate because people, we want to make money. We want to create generational wealth. And we say these things. We say we want to create generational wealth for our kids and our grandkids and everyone after that. Okay, that's great. But if all of the success that we have comes at the expense of our current why, your wife and your kids, right? For me, it's my family, my loved ones. We are not family oriented. We're not doing this for generational wealth. We're doing mm -hmm. this for ourselves. And so the message that you came on with, it, it truly hit me in an amazing way. And I, and I thank you for that. So to be able to come here into your home and share some space and time with you is a complete honor for me. So thank you so, so much. Thank you um, for, for being here, my brother. Anytime. Uh, I can't wait to actually come out and hang out with you in person. That's going to be. Oh, I can't wait, bro. We're going to do it for um, sure, man. But yeah, where would you like me to start? I mean, there's a lot. And I could talk. You know me. I could talk for hours. Yeah, just let's start. How did you grow up and how did you like, what did you do to lead you into real estate investing? Yeah, love it. Okay. So I think there's a lot of people who have this avatar and they just, there's not enough people like me who are vocal about the fact that we came from this background. Why? Because in the world of entrepreneurialism, what is the sexiest thing out there? Lambos, mansions, mm -hmm. stacks of cash, private jets, right? Um, so for people like me, I was raised by a single mother who's an immigrant. She raised four boys in the California ghetto. And I know a lot of people, they don't like me saying the word ghetto, but I'm sorry. There ain't nothing. It to is what it is, man. It is what it is. Like there's a few people we've had on my podcast. They, they come from and they make no bones about it. If you're from the ghetto, or you're from the projects. That's where you're from. Let's not that's sugarcoat it. Those areas are designed to do very few things. And one of those things is it's supposed to promote a cycle that makes it very difficult for people to leave. Mm. And growing up in that, growing up in that, that household um, where my mother had to sacrifice everything, we didn't see her. I rarely saw her you know, growing up because she was too busy providing and working her butt off to be able to provide for her four sons. Mm. And that, you know, being half Asian, I kinda, you know, college is a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. College is absolutely non-negotiable. Getting a grad degree is also somewhat non-negotiable, and I have that too. Um, but went to school, had a great time there, and I was actually in a totally different field where I was in public service, and I worked for the government. I did, I did a lot of amazing things, and I had a lot of fun doing it, and I was a very high performer there. But one thing that I realized is, one, I am still trading my time for money. Mm -hmm. Two... I was working my butt off. I was working like 60 hours a week. And I'm like, I do not want to do this in the long term. This isn't going to give me the freedom that I want to give to my family. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing that I want to stay away from is when I have a wife and kids, I want to be present. I want to be there. Like dad can't be gone away yeah. 60 hours a week. That, that's, that's not happening. That is a non-negotiable to me. So I realized that I need to do something different. Absolutely needed to do something different. And it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, great. Well, if I want to become, and I made, I just, you know, made up my mind that day. It was one day I woke up and I was like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to be a billionaire. The decisions made, the decisions made, I got to figure it out. And I'm like, now how? No idea. No freaking clue. So let's start with, instead of a billion, let's start with a million. Let's, how do we get to a million first? Right. And just simply put, I always kind of knew, I think we all know that 90% of the world's, you know, or America's millionaires yep. are made to real estate. And then I, it really took me down a journey. And I say this, this is like, this was years ago, guys. This was last year. This was literally this time <laughs> last year. Um, yeah, August. Yeah, this time last year. I hadn't even gone oh, to so real estate. Literally a year ago from today. Literally a year ago. Epiphany. Yeah, literally a year ago, I had graduated grad school. I finished my master's. And I was like, okay, now I need to go do something amazing with my life instead of trading my time for money. And so where do I go? I had no money, so I could only go one place, and that's YouTube University. Mm. And I'm like, okay, great. So I found, I discovered some amazing human beings who I, who I totally look up to. Uh, you know, I found Graham Stephan was the first guy who taught me anything about financial freedom, what that looked like. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at his method of conventionally buying homes. So I'm like, okay, this is great, but I need to, you know, save up $50,000. I'm negative. I just, I just finished college. Like, I'm negative mm -hmm. in my bank account right now. I don't got that money. I need to figure out a way to accelerate, right? And I'm like, okay, great. Uh, well, real estate, I know is the key. I can't do it his way. Then I came across this guy, this dude with, you know, great hair. His name's Ryan Pineda. Ryan okay. Pineda is a great dude, right? And he mm -hmm. talks about flipping houses. And I realized, hey, like he's making a lot of money. You can make it quick. I don't know that flipping is for me. 
It's just not. I just don't have the tolerance for it. And then, I don't know how, somehow I heard of this word called wholesale. Mm. I'm like, okay. And the, the clickbait of it was that you basically don't need to have any money at all to do it. Yeah. And I'm like, that, that's me right there. I, I have zero dollars to my name. I am negative in my bank account. If I go to Walmart right now and buy some bubble gum, like Wells Fargo will call me freaking out because like there's a scam, <laughs> you know, happening or something. And so I discover wholesale. I'm like, great. Okay. Well, I'm smart enough to know that YouTube University it's only going to give me just enough. Yep. Everyone's trying to sell me a course or a mentorship or something. Now I need to know who do I really resonate with? Who do I really like? And what I quickly found out is when I got into the space of an advanced investor, and I knew this person was literally transacting, right? Legitimately transacting in this, in this industry and not mm-hmm. talking about it. I say, hey, if you could go and deploy your capital to any one mentorship or one person, who would it be? And they said, go to this thing called Wholesale Hotline. Mm. You're going to see three guys there, Brent Daniels, Jamil Damji, and this guy named Pace Morby. He has a little peace sign on his hat. So I went to Wholesale Hotline, and I was immediately blown away because about by the value they give. They weren't Mm. making content. They were giving out value. And there's there's a core difference to that. There's a critical difference to what that means. And they were showing you step by step how to go do this game of wholesale. And to top that off, Those three guys are legitimately transacting. It's due diligence, right? It's vetting who I'm going to invest in. And so what I did is this. I I went to Wholesale Hotline. I consumed as much as possible. And then I found out that Pace actually has this program called Mm -hmm. Sub2. Now, 100% I was full send. By this point, I'd seen all that I needed to see of Pace Morby to know that I like him, that I resonate with him, that I see something in him. I didn't have the money to join sub two, Mm. not even close, not even close. I convinced the recruiter against probably his best interest to do this (laughs) to let me come in on a six month payment plan. And I convinced him, I think over two days to let me do it. I I just kept hammering the phones and like bugging and bugging him. I'm like, dude, let me in, let me in. I'm going to do so much for you guys. And the reality is this, I couldn't pay past month two. Mm. So because I was negative in my bank account, because I had no money, because I just graduated grad school and didn't like I was leaving my previous industry, didn't have a job like I was going all in on this game. And if I didn't get a deal paid out by the end of month two, they would have basically like I have to remove myself from that mentorship. Mm -hmm. I can't continue to pay. And what that did is it allowed me to embrace holistically the idea of burning the ships. And for me, it was one of those things where the industry that I came from prior, there was a temptation for me to always want to go back. And I knew that if I entertained that temptation, I would, I would fall back to my default setting. Right. And I knew that I needed to cut ties off there and I needed a full send in real estate and going in on that payment plan, not having enough money to even pay for month three, it required me to accept that I had to work harder than I've ever worked before. And it led to me literally being on the phone for about 10 hours a day, eight to 10 hours a day, Monday through Sunday on the weekends. And usually I'd put more time in on Sundays because I knew more people were home. So I would be cold calling people on Sundays. And I did that for my first couple of months. I got immediate traction. Mm. And that's when it hit me that this game, like you said, this game is easy. I would say this, it is actually maybe not necessarily easy, but it is simple. It is 100% a simple formula. And if you can figure out that formula and just re- and just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, success is almost guaranteed. All and the time. for me, it was basically this. Can I sit in my room with this glued to my head and just in this very room right now and then just sit here, listen to a Google Voice dial tone? I didn't have the money for a dialer. I was calling people's free lists. I literally just had my phone in a Google voice and I did that for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. And I started getting immediate, immediate traction. And that translated eventually down to me understanding another thing. I was caught in another hamster wheel. Mm. Like I perfected wholesaling as a, I didn't perfect it, but I did really good as a solopreneur. Then I'm like, okay, great. Well, now I have a high paying job. So to your point, what we, and we'll probably talk about this a little bit later, is now I'm at a point now where it's like, how can I build the best team in the industry 
how can I automate it? And how can I remove myself from this hamster wheel? That's right. And so to your point, nine months in, um, nine months in, we just closed deal number 40 to the closing table last week. Literally have a check right here. We got, we got it overnighted from UPS for Congrats, there's a $30,000 check in here. Um, which is amazing. Yeah, um, right? I gotta, I actually gotta go cash that. It's just sitting there. Um, and it's been amazing and I've been blessed, but the reality is, you know, if I had to break it down to anyone who's listening, who's new and kind of just trying to figure out their bearings, number one is you have to accept that you need to compress time and you cannot compress time on your own. You need a legitimate mentor a big brother, someone who you can look to and get your questions answered. And that person has to be transacting. That's right. And, and it doesn't matter how many like DocuSign screenshots they post or how many, um, anything like that. Like, are they closing at the closing table? Do they have HUDs, settlement statements? If they don't show you their addresses and they say they own this property, they probably don't own that property. That's right, man. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously a lot more that I can get into there, Yeah, but, so you- um, Go ahead. You figured out really early on something that a lot of people tend to forget. A lot of people they wanna they want the success as quickly as possible, but they're they're not putting their backs up against the wall enough to invest into a mentor, right? So because you hear it a lot, there's a lot of scams going on out here. A lot of people are mentoring people when they shouldn't be. So what you did with what you did was you found someone who you resonated with and you invested, you didn't ask for free coaching. You invested into the mentorship program, even when you didn't have the money and then you took action. That's it. And that's what a lot of, I feel that's step number one. A lot of people, they tend to forget, um, you know, a lot of people are penny pinching themselves, but really by penny pinching yourself, what are you doing? You're hurting your chances of, succeeding here's someone that you know if you know their transaction if you know that they're closing deals they're transacting deals um why would they want to take their time out to uh teach you something that it took them years to figure out and do it for free right and i'm not saying that that's not the case all the time some people they legitimately find a local mentor where they can you know, I, I, that's the way I actually got started. Someone actually showed me the business um, after I had a certain level of success. He showed me the right way to do it. Right. So um, what you did was you found someone to show you. That was the first thing you did. Found someone to show you how to do it. And you took action. Right. Now, was it an easy transition for you going from a college graduate with no money in the bank to understanding how to do the wholesale business, the real estate business in general? That's an amazing question. Um, what one, I want to hit on this before we move on from this topic mm-hmm. real quick, though. What you said is so true. There is such a power to putting yourself in a desperate situation. Mm-hmm. Now, I've had, and this is something that, you know, you've been on my podcast, you've seen some of the other people that have been on there. We've had people worth over $100 million, $200 million on, Mm -hmm. have done billions of dollars of transactions, and they've all at some point, most of them at some point in their lives have lost it all. And what ends up happening is 100%. And you've lived through, what, two, three recessions now? You've been in business through two, three recessions now. Yeah, I've done business through two or three, and I've made, I've made, I, I became a millionaire twice before I was 30, and... I lost everything after the first million I've made. So, and, and here's the thing that desperation when people, this is what I've learned from all of these people. And it's, it's, um, it's funny. I'm not, I'm not a religious person, but, uh, you know, Solomon, he actually, he didn't want money. He wanted wisdom, knowledge. He wanted wisdom. That's right. And that's, and that's my, that's my whole thing in life now is, is is such a powerful thing. So when you Mm -hmm. came on, I just seek wisdom, like to your point, wholesaling, we can go figure that game out. That's easy. That's simple, right? The wisdom that you've had through your life experience, that's powerful and that's not easily attainable. Right. So I, what I always look for is when I, when I find these people who've lived through it and they've lost it all, that desperate situation that they're in, right? That you 
and I can't remember if she was your wife at the time, but you guys were basically, yeah, uh, she stuck, she stuck with you through some out, of the man. worst times. Yep. yep. And the situation that you were in there where back was up against the wall, you were in the most desperate situation of your life. That's when you find another gear. That's when you find how to truly succeed in this game. And so it's one of those things where all this to wrap up and say that if we are penny pinching as new investors, we're robbing ourselves of unlocking another gear. Yep. You're staying within a comfort zone. And guess what? That desperation that's outside of your comfort zone, that's where the most growth is. And if you like, I actually encourage people, this is very irresponsible for me to do, but I encourage people to put themselves in sometimes desperate situations to see, like to test their metal, to absolutely test their metal and see if they'll buckle or not. But you know and, what, man? That's all a part of mindset, right? That that really is. I mean, it, it takes a mindset shift from traditional thinking to thinking outside the box and really believing that you can actually do something. It takes a belief factor to to really be able. I mean, if I, I feel like if your back isn't up against the wall enough, or if you're just a little too comfortable, it's going to be difficult for you to succeed. You really have to be uncomfortable in an uncomfortable situation, and really like like you said, burn the bridges. You have to burn everything behind you because there's no way out but to succeed or die, right? And I think that's what it takes to really become successful. I think people they come into the business, and I'm and this isn't everybody, but I think there's a certain level of people. Even when they get coaching, they're expecting the coach to do the work for them. But in reality, you have to come in and just look for the one nugget. If you find the one nugget that you need from the coach, the rest of it you should be able to handle. You know what I mean? Absolutely. How do you feel about that? A hundred percent. Well, let me, let me ask you this question. This is going to go back to like the mindset shift from college student, previous industry, mm-hmm. W2 to entrepreneurialism. If you lot, if you, all of your businesses, I know you're, you're basically a serial entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. If all of your businesses stopped today and you had to start over at zero, is there any question that you would make your millions oh, back? Bro, I'll, I'll make it back in 90 days. And here's why. Um, and I told my wife this multiple times and she knows this. You can't, you could take all the money away. You could take all the material things away from me, but you can't take this away. I know how to do it. I've done it two times already. And and then I've done it over and over again in multiple businesses. So I went from broke to making a whole lot of money, lost it all, was broke again, then made, made it all back in less than a year. I know how to do it. So I take the knowledge, the wisdom, like, like you said, Solomon, uh, he asked for wisdom. I take that over the money because I know exactly what to do with the money. I know how to get the money and you can't take that away from me. So I'll take the wisdom over, over the material things any day. And that's, and that was the biggest point of, of leaving, you know, that workforce in that industry, which was very paramilitary. Mm -hmm. And what that means is it was a chain of command. We had to abide by our Mm -hmm. place and stick in our role. And the hardest thing switching to entrepreneurialism was understanding, accepting, and embracing, and living by, this is all on me. No Mm. one's going to give me an order. No one's going to tell me what to do. If I don't show up to work today, no one's going to hold me accountable. Well, you know, also, you know, going back to the schooling thing, right? So the schooling thing was invented by the workforce in order for you. I think they said, I read somewhere, Rockefeller and his family invented the schooling system to train people on how to work for their companies. You know what I mean? So they're literally teaching you how to have a job and not be an entrepreneur. When you make the transition from the way they're teaching you in school into entrepreneurship in order to build your own business, now you start thinking like Rockefeller, right? You start thinking about how can I build something for myself versus build somebody else's wealth. Absolutely. And uh, that changes the game, man. It just it, it's it's a complete mindset shift going from getting a paycheck or going to school to, uh, you know, uh, live your life out under some profession into making thirty thousand dollar paychecks like you just did last week on deal number 40. 
<laughs> yeah. You know what and I mean? It's, it's, by the way, that, that's actually, uh, we, we're keeping that property. So uh, that's, nice, a, got to keep it and, and made the check on top of it, which is amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, one thing I will say that school taught me, though, is because I, I honestly think I'm an extremely intelligent person. Mm-hmm. And you know what's a key hallmark of intelligent people? There's two things. One is they get bored really quick. They get bored mm-hmm. very quick. As soon as they figure it out, it's it's not fun anymore. It's not fun two, anymore. The most intelligent people procrastinate so much because they know they can get it all done in two minutes at the very end. So <laughs> one thing that school taught me was how to basically find the quickest, most efficient way to get answers. That is the only thing that's actually served me in entrepreneurship and you know, to what we talked about earlier, compression of time. Yeah, Instead man. of me suffering through ten years of being a try like, you know, uh, you know, success and fail and success and fail and like kind of failing forward as an entrepreneur. And I still do that. Mm-hmm. I can just go pay a mentor who's done it all for me and cut the line. And so I would say those are, you know, those type of mindset shifts, understanding that nothing's guaranteed. Mm-hmm. That was scary. That was absolutely scary. When I had a negative bank account balance, I understand that I have to go ahead and if I don't succeed right now, what am I going to do? I'm screwed. Mm. And what that actually let me do is it, it allowed me to unlock this part of my mindset. I, you know, I like to call it the second gear or another gear that I never knew I had. And what I basically learned about myself is that it doesn't matter if I lose it all today. Like the fact that I did it, you know, 40 deals in nine months, I'll probably do 40 by the end of this year. And it's because it's all up here. Mm-hmm. And that mindset shift and that, you know, confidence and conviction that comes with it, that's irreplaceable. Yep. No one can ever take that away. Yeah, take it away, man. Once you have it, you have it. And that's it. You know, so, you know, at the end of the day, man, it, it really, it, it, it's, it, well, going back to what you said about, you know, the most intelligent people, I guess I'm a genius, man, because <laughs> I procrastinate, you know, I, I like to hire stuff out, especially if I know I'm going to procrastinate on it. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, it, it really, It's about having a little bit of information and then doing something with the information. If you do something with it, just one thing. When I was on Wall Street, they used to say, if you just add one thing to your business every day, there's no way you can fail. And and that resonated with me on on a large scale because if I just add one phone call, one offer every day, one motivated seller, one buyer, one property every day, how can I fail? Right? So... Um, just understanding things on that level, just understanding the basics of how to get that done, it will change your life, literally, man. So I want to get into what this nine month experience has been like for you, man. So like your first deal, how long did it take for you to get your first one done? Great question. So I got into this space, like really as an entrepreneur in sales, like I had no sales background before this, right? Really just trying to learn it as I go. Mm -hmm. I spent my first month basically month and a like basically month learning because I needed to learn. I, I didn't, I didn't know a damn thing about real estate. I didn't know how to comp property. I didn't know how freaking escrow really worked. I didn't know anything at all. Right. So I had, to, I understood that I had to actually spend a month actually learning to your point. There's a point where you, in your education, you'll get enough information for you to be able to go out and execute. Right. The problem is so many people get stuck in just consuming constantly and constantly and constantly. They're four months so, in and they yeah. haven't executed. I yeah. was very aware of this. I don't know why. I just had the self-awareness to understand, hey, I know that I have enough information now. If I don't go out and deploy it, I'm just I'm just being lazy again. Mm-hmm. So first month of learning, I had basically two weeks of execution. I got my first contract a month and a half in. So one second. <laughs> <laughs> so what what month was this? Was this back in like December, January? Basically, of this year? basically like November. November of the, last year, you were learning. You took the whole month to learn. First two weeks of December, you got your first deal. Uh, so October joined some. I think like mid October, and then okay. basically somewhere in November, about a month in, that's when I got my first contract. Thirty day, not even thirty days in, man. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. And the cool story about that one is, is here's the thing that one I got on vacation, I was sick as hell on vacation, which sucks. We were actually at Disneyland and I basically couldn't even go to Disneyland cause I was so freaking sick. So I was in the hotel room dying no calls. and I was, and I was like, okay, well I got a lead right here. This guy should be good to go. Like, let me call him in. And I literally every five seconds of the call is like, 
I'm going to cough right now. I am so sorry. Please ignore this. And I'd wow. cough my lungs out. Be like, okay, hey, I'm back now. And the seller was actually cool with it. It was it was pretty amazing. That's how you know and, they're motivated. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I was like, hey, I promise I'm I'm I will get through this. I, he was probably wondering, is this guy even gonna live through escrow? <laughs> and um, but that was my first deal. Got it locked up on vacation, sick in a hotel room. And in after Cali? That, that what was that? Was it in Cali? No, this was a it was in Texas. It was a first deal in Texas. Um and, but I'm in Cali, you know this. I'm in Cali, yeah. uh, but the first deal was in Texas, um, right outside of uh, Dallas, right outside of Dallas. And it was an amazing proof of concept for me there. You know why? Because wow. I learned right then and there that you can do business on vacation from a hotel room with a 100 degree fever and still make money. There's no stopping you, man. And After that... It was like, I'm never going to work for anyone ever again. I don't care if they offer me a million dollars a year. I can go to Disneyland and get a deal at Disneyland. Like, okay, I'm all in. I'm all in. And then from there on, I've been, um, I'm on this mission actually to get contracts in the weirdest places. <laughs> so like every time I go to an amusement park, I will tell my team, hey, if there's a hot lead, because I have my closers and they close deals now, I've kind of removed myself. But like, if I'm at Disneyland, you know, I'm there. And if there's a hot lead live transfer them while I'm in line, you know, for the new Star Wars ride, because I want to be able to say the story that I got a deal in line at Disneyland. <laughs> and now I'm just kind of in this, like, and all of this is to prove a point, guys. Yeah. And the point is you can do this business anywhere. anywhere. And anywhere. that freedom, truly what it comes down to is freedom is irreplaceable. The fact that I can lock up a fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars contract on vacation at Disneyland in line for Star Wars Forget a job. Forget yeah. a job. Yep. Like we figured it out. Um, so yeah, that proof of concept was absolutely massive. It was also an extremely difficult deal. There was a power of attorney. The actual homeowner was in prison for murder. Um, so I had to deal with that and like learning lessons, learning lessons, learning lessons. I literally right? just did a subject to deal like that a year ago. Guy was in prison, bought the house. It was a hundred and I think I paid one twenty nine for it. Ended up selling it for two fifty as is. Made a boatload of money on that house, man. The guy was literally in prison and had a power of attorney that I would meet up. I met up with him probably two times in order to get everything locked up. I wonder man. if that's so, a list that we could pull. Homeowners in prison I, on life sentences. Man, that'll be crazy, right? <laughs> if anyone does that and you get deals, like we need royalties because that we just came up with a billion dollar idea right there. Yep. yep. Um but yeah, you know, after that, the proof of concept was there. And when people say this, we always say this for any newbie listening, you've heard experienced people say that the proof of concept is life changing. I'm going to tell you right now, it is absolutely freaking life changing. Because mm. after that, I, I was excited to be on the phones. Mm -hmm. Every time I was on the phone, I felt like an athlete on game day where I'm just ready to freaking execute. Yep. And it was just hammering away, hammering away, hammering away. You hit a high, man. You hit a certain – there's a certain adrenaline that comes. It, it's just knowing that you're in the game and you're succeeding, man. It, it, there's a certain adrenaline that comes with succeeding that you can't feel. It's like playing sports and winning the championship. You know, this business – business is a sport, right? And if you have any level of comp, uh, competitive spirit or competition within you, you just want to be the best at it, man. That's just what it is. And I, I never realized, you know, what it was. I never was able to really kind of put a, a term behind it. Mm -hmm. I had the tremendous honor of having one of my role models in the space, Steve Trang, on my podcast a week ago last week. And he came on and, and he talked about this. He actually coined it achievement addiction. And I never realized that that's, that's what it was. That that's mm. like basically what I have. And now it's at a point where, guys, when you guys get into entrepreneurialism, in the beginning, you're struggling to get a deal. Right. Then you're going to get that. You're going to proof of concept and you're going to get like a dopamine rush or endorphin yep. rush. And you're going to, you know, have this achievement addiction start to kick in. Then it just becomes a game. Then it's like, great. How many contracts can I get in a week? Then mm -hmm. in a day, then in, you know, just one call. Can I turn this one seller into two properties? And once you start gamifying everything, you will have more fun with it and you will actually enjoy your life so much more. And to that point, it was amazing. I got, I will always brag about this. I will always brag about this because it's one of my biggest achievements. I'm so happy about it. In an effort to gamify my life, 
I was competing with a good friend of mine who's a phenomenal closer in sub two. And he and I were just like, okay, who can get the most contracts in a week? And then he beat me. And I was like, like, no, <laughs> not allowed, right? And then I called him up and I'm like, dude, let's see who can get more in one day. We'll get the community to give us all their hot leads and we're just pounding the phones. And I won. He got three that day. I got six. And I'm like, there we go. And then after that, I always go through periods of reflection and gratitude. And I'm reflecting and I'm like, a year ago this time, I was on YouTube University trying to figure out how to make money. Now I get yeah, to sit yeah. on a podcast with an amazing human being like you and you've changed so many Thank people's you. lives. And it's, it's, I'm always just in reflection of like how quickly things can change. So if there's anyone and you guys are watching and you're brand new, you've never done a deal before, you've never made a dime in entrepreneurialism. The reality is if you have the right self-awareness and the ability to execute and you can convince yourself to execute at a high level, by the time you're nine months in, you can do a hundred deals. Like the reality is this, you can outpace me and I want you to outpace me. Mm -hmm. I want you to outpace me 10 times over and then the only requirement is that you give back to people around you. So you and I, uh, I have to say this, you and I have had so many people who've sacrificed for us to be here, mm -hmm. right? For me, it's, it's my mother, it's the people who've, who've sacrificed, my friends, my loved ones, my mentors, who've seen something in me when they had no reason to. They had no reason to. I'm just a kid from the ghetto who could have stayed in the ghetto and got caught in that cycle, mm -hmm. but people plucked me out and forced me to get out of it. I have an obligation to give back for them. So if anyone's watching, like always walk with that. Absolutely. Always walk with that mentality. That's right. So why don't we provide them, provide our listeners with a step-by-step -step process, maybe three to five steps to go from, and, and let's talk about what you've done, right? So you, you said you got a mentor, you educated yourself, you took action. What would be, let's say three to five steps that our listeners can take in order to really get to a point where they're actually closing deals in a relatively short period of time? What did it take for you? And the reason I'm asking that is because this wasn't, this happened for you not so long ago. Like for me, I can still talk about my first deal. People may not resonate with it the same way because it was so long ago, but for you, this is brand new, you know? So like, what did it take for you to get here? I love it. I love that. It's such a great question. So, you know, in the world of entrepreneurialism, we talk a lot about mindset. Mm -hmm. I think newbies need to stop talking about mindset. Mm. Here's one thing that I've learned. As an athlete, if you're, you know, an athlete, you're in the military, you're in law enforcement, all of these, all of these, you know, industries, these kind of niches, they do this thing where they have a very limited amount of time and they have to mold people into greatness, Right. Think about the mindset shift that, that the Marines have to go through in their basic training. It is a very short amount of time to take someone who's maybe 18 years out of high school and get them to march into danger. That mindset shift is a huge one. And they don't do it by talking about mindset. Mm -hmm. They don't get people to go to war and, you know, speed towards speeding bullets by talking about mindset. What do they do when you go to an academy? What happens? It is repetition of uncomfortable things over and over and over again without questioning why the hell are we doing this? Hmm. And early on, I had to learn and accept that if I want to achieve that greatness, it wasn't, I always looked at guys like Pace and, you know, Grant Cardone and Ryan Pineda. I'm like, God, what is, they just have something up here that I don't, you know, and how do I get that? And I quickly learned that you don't get that by thinking about getting it. You don't get it by talking about getting it. Mindset is a byproduct of a lifestyle, in my opinion. Absolutely. And then all I learned is great. So if you're a newbie, stop talking about mindset. There's nothing like there is something special about guys like Pace Morby. He's a special human being, but his success isn't because he's uniquely talented or anything like that. It's because that man works harder than everybody else. I've never met another entrepreneur who wakes up at freaking two in the morning every day to pound out, you know, emails and phone calls and things like that. And it really came down to me simplifying those steps and simplifying and highlighting one thing for me as a newbie, if I want to get my first deal, what is a money making activity and audit everything that I do is making a CRM and, you know, looking at YouTube videos about the best dialers. Is that money making? No, not at all. I didn't get my first dialer until I was like five months in. It already had already crushed a ton of deals. 
bro, when I first started, we didn't have dialers. We I had to pick up. We didn't even have CRMs. My CRM was a piece of paper and a pencil and my cell phone. That's how I operated. I didn't even have Internet access. So, you know, all of this new technology and stuff, yes, it does make the, the business a lot easier. But at the end of the day, you don't need that stuff. I, I literally spent the first eight years of my business without even having a website. And I made millions of dollars doing it that way. So. We just made a website. We literally just made a website. <laughs> See? <laughs> we literally made it like a week and a half ago. And, and like you guys, you guys already, think man. about, so it, it all comes down to this. Isolate, what is your goal? Is your goal to be a wholesaler? Is it to be a, a buy and holder? Is it to be a flipper? Whatever it is, right? Then isolate, what is the direct money making activity to get that deal? For Not me, the busy I, work. Not the because that's busy work, right? Creating the CRMs and all that's all busy stuff. You it makes you feel like you're doing something, but you're not necessarily making money. So, I love the fact that you're talking about money making activities. What's a money making activity? Pick up the phone and call somebody, right? Pick up the phone. You know, there's a movie out there called The uh, Wolf of Wall Street, and there's an amazing scene in it where uh, Leo's character basically says, are you broke and you don't have a job and you're worried about not paying bills? <laughs> Great. And he cusses a lot, so I'm not going to do that here. But he says, pick up the phone and start dialing. Yep. And that is the answer. So the reality is, guys, number one, go find someone ahead of you. Go find someone ahead of you. Compress time by learning from them, absorbing from them, right? That is number one. Number two is isolate what is the most direct money-making activity that you can do? And even if it sucks, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, I'm sorry for me as an intelligent person, sitting on the phones for 10 hours a day sucked. Yep. It sucked. Guess what? You have to embrace the suck. You got to <laughs> embrace the suck. I love and that, man. Em you got to get a t-shirt. <laughs> embrace the suck. <laughs> I actually learned that from a few military friends. They were like, they're in the army and that's basically what they, like, that's what their drill sergeants, like, they would tell them on day one, this is going to suck embrace the suck. Um, <laughs> and once you do that, it's, it's things like that. So guys, if it's to be a wholesaler and to close deals, guess what? Forget the CRM, forget the dollar, get Google voice. It's free. It costs nothing. Get Podio. It's free. It costs nothing. Right. And then pick up the phone and start dialing. If it is to be a flipper, instead of maybe calling a seller, pick up the phone and start dialing a wholesaler, yep. start dialing a construction crew and get them primed and ready to go. Whatever you do, you have to move the needle towards a money making activity. Love it, man. It's it's actually a lot simpler than people think it is. They think there's it this is. magic list or it's a the, how many texts or what script to use. I've never used a script in my life. Boom. Like my Love team, it. I probably should give them no, forget that. I don't want to give them a script. Um it would distract them. Mm -hmm. Like people it's a magic script, it's things like that. None of that stuff matters. That reminds me of uh, when, I, when I was down on Wall Street, man, not to cut you off, but mm -hmm. I think this is an important point to bring out to, you know, to your point. When I was down on Wall Street, they said, I could take two people and I could lock both of you in a room. One of you, I can train and or I can take two brand new people. One of you I can put amongst the, the rest of us and see how you. You know, I can give you a script. I can I can see how you're going to progress from that point forward by giving you the script, by, you know, telling you this is what I want you to do. But then the other one, I can lock in a room for 30 days with nothing else in there but a phone, no script, nothing like that. I guarantee you the person without the script with, with nothing else but a phone, no other distractions is going to make more progress, more money than the person we put into the crowd. Because the crowd has the influence on you. When you have no way to get out but to actually do the work, you're going to succeed a lot quicker than anybody else. So having a script is a crutch, in my opinion. That's why when people come into my program, I don't like to provide scripts. Right? I give them some basic ideas, basic understandings of what they're looking for. But a script is not going to help you. It's the, the will to work, the will to just get it done and not make excuses. That, that, that's what changes the game for people. And that's where I think a lot of people are missing that particular part of, you know, their, progr their progression or their, their, their business in general. It's not helping them to have all of these crutches. Setting up a CRM is a crutch. That's busy work. 
setting up, you know, your phone line so that you can dial. You might feel like you're doing something by setting up the phone line is fine, but just pick up the phone and start dialing. That's a money making activity. Having a website is busy work. You know, um, pulling one of those lists is busy work. Forget about all of that stuff. Pick up the phone and start calling and let's get to the money. That's how you make money, right? It's absolutely it. You know, in this world, when people are newer investors there, it's, it's an element of shiny object syndrome, right? So yep. what's the list? What's the dialer? What's the seer? Forget all that. Forget all that. Mm. Simplify it. Use the ugliest, stupidest, most basic yep. things. And I promise you, you will succeed. And to this point, so we had a clever summit it was relatively recent, right? It was in mm. Las Vegas. I went there on the way back, literally on the flight back, my spine basically actually had a fracture. I had a stress mm. fracture in my spinal cord. And one of my vertebrae had a crack. <sighs> Lots of travel. <laughs> Lots oh, of travel. So from carrying like the bags and stuff or? Carrying the bags. Um, and I had at that point, I think it was my eighth flight in like 30 days. And lots of travel, lots of movement, lots of just wear and tear on the body, lots of 12, 13 hour days of walking, speaking, all, a lot I of stuff like that. Can right? happen, man. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things. Um, and I actually had the same thing happen in college. I was a collegiate athlete. And then, so it was a pre existing thing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and as soon as I was a collegiate tennis player and I actually had the same thing happen in my, in my spine then, um, wow. different vertebrae, but yeah. So I came back on the plane, literally felt something go wrong. And I was like, mm. this isn't good. <laughs> and, uh, I was out for about, it took about eight weeks to heal, but I was out for two to three weeks, like mm -hmm. 102 degree fever for two, three weeks straight. And I want everyone to hear this. This is so important. I was sleeping 16 to 18 hours a day because I was heavily drugged up on pain meds because mm. I can't live without them at that point. Right? right. When you're, when your spine is broken and, um, I still got two contracts. <laughs> Why? And here's the thing. One, I'm, I'm a, like, I'm obsessed with like, I need to perform. I need to perform. If I don't, the success goes away. Mm. I'm not at a point yet where I can just step away and my empire is built and it's going to run on its own. I'm not there yet. So I know that I need to be involved. And I realized the same thing. Um, someone's, you know, everyone's sending me lots of love and support and gift baskets and all this kind of stuff a key friend of mine, um, killer closer, all about hard work and execution. He sends me this thing. Um, he's like, Hey, you know, I hope, you know, wish that you're recovering. I, I, you know, wish you nothing but the best. And he said, wouldn't it be amazing if you got a deal while you have a broken spine and you made it happen. And then I, I took that personally, <laughs> I took that personally. Right. And I'm like, okay, well game on. Right. Um, and then at the simplest point, guys, my first deal, I was dry heaving, coughing my lungs out to a seller. There was no script. I didn't say the right thing. I didn't say the perfect thing. I was dying in a hotel room. He knew that I was. I still got the deal. Mm -hmm. when, when I had my when, like I had a, a stress fracture in my spine a few months ago, I got two contracts. Both of them have closed. Both of them actually did end up closing, which is amazing. And it goes to show that you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. So forget the script, forget the dialers, forget the perfect pitch. None of that mm -hmm. stuff matters. Just get on the phone, have conversations with human beings. And here's the reality. A lot of people don't realize this. Just solve their problem. Boom. Boom. Round if of you applause. solve their problem, you can do this with a broken spine. Yeah. Like completely. This is, the, this is the reality of this game. Um, That's dope, so I man. love that. The fact that people come into your space are like, okay, what script? How do I do this? Throw that crap out, throw it yep. out. It's a distraction. And then so like we talk about this, um, about, you know, we talked about me, I'm, I'm setting things in place to scale and to remove myself. One thing I need is a phenomenal, phenomenal closer. And I've been headhunting for a while on who this closer is, who can, you know, maybe be half as good as me, as good as me, whatever. And I had a lot of people come to me. They're like, and I know that they're talented. I know they're phenomenally talented. Here's the thing. They're probably like per conversation. They're probably the best closers out there. I'm not moving forward with any of them. I'm moving forward with one specific person because this person stuck out to me. It was his birthday and it was 10 PM about 10 PM. His time he was calling California sellers. Boom. 
Come on, he man. Replace when he it. wants to work, he wants it. Exactly. And it's like, and he's monotone, doesn't have a perfect voice, doesn't have, you know, a radio DJ kind of sales kind of vibe to him. He's not the perfect closer for all intents and purposes. But what makes him a perfect closer to me and is that he freaking picks up the phone and starts dialing. You know, that, that was one of the traits that I had on Wall Street, man. I was from the projects. I, I, I could barely speak you know, clear English to a, somebody worth $100 million at that point. But because I was the first one in the office and the last one to leave, I used to spend the night in the office, bring my toothbrush, bring some deodorant with me, spend the night in the office during the week. And because of that, I was at one of the top closers in my office, man. I just pounded the phones. And I carried that same attitude, that same mentality on uh, when I got into real estate and I succeeded relatively quickly in real estate because of it, man. So it it really is just, again, it goes back to what we were talking about. You know, you could have a little bit of information, but the action behind the information is what's going to change the game for you, not the information itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is through that, you know, through the, it's through the hard action, right? It's through yeah. the repetition, that's where mindset gets unlocked. Yeah. It's the, all that, the success, the mindset, the money, yep. that's yep. a byproduct of you committing to daily activities without fail. And think about this too, man. Anybody, like, so right now, I've been in business for 20 years. The only difference between me and someone just getting started is time, right? That's literally the only difference, time. So I look like a genius because I've been doing it for so long, but really a genius is created over time. I've been doing it longer than you. I've been doing it longer. I'm speaking of the person that, you know, that's watching this or listening to this, getting started. And that's why I look that much smarter or I look like I've been doing, I have momentum, right? The only way to build momentum is by doing something over a period of time. So time changes everything. If you just put in the work, put in the time, You'll be a genius as well. There's no difference between you and I. The only difference is time, right? Absolutely. And this is one of my heroes in life. He is a, a, a tennis player. His name's Roger Federer. He's considered the greatest of all time in tennis. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's watching and you disagree with that, like DM me, we'll, we'll, we'll duke it out in my DMs. <laughs> uh, he is the greatest of all time. He, he said this the other day, and he said that he learned at an early age that you cannot replicate genius. Yeah. This is true. You cannot replicate genius, but you can replicate passion mm. and hard work. Those two things combined will result in genius. Boom. That's, and that, it's, that was a smarter way of saying what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, you, you and you're, you know, you're a living testament to it. You know, you've, you've tried and you've failed and you've bounced back, you know, a few times and that experience is just so, so, so invaluable. No one who's starting can get to where you're at right now. They can compress time by learning from you. They can. Mm -hmm. They can maybe get to where you're at in a few years. Mm -hmm. But to get where you're at right now, hell no. It's not possible. 20 years ahead, man. Exactly. So, and, you know, this is, there's so many, there's so many, um, analogies that you, that you could use for this. I mean, dude, like, look at you, you're freaking jacked, right? Like at the end of the day, if we go to a powerlifting competition or we go to like, let, let's go old school, right? Let's go super old school. We look at some of the, we look at some people, um, in the Olympics, um, in, in Olympic bodybuilding, we look mm -hmm. at Arnold, right? He was cocky, but he had a right to be. The reality is this Arnold never missed. Yep. People thought it was genius or talent or just natural gifts. And I'm sure he's, he, there was some genetic jackpot that he did hit, but so did everyone on that stage with him. You look at Franco Colombo, you look at Zane, you look at a lot of these people and they're, they're amazingly gifted human beings. But the reality is this, Arnold never missed. He'd be there day in, day out, putting in the reps in that shows. You, you can do the same thing with fitness, with sports, with right. anything else. I just watched a video. I, I, he's a YouTuber. His name is Brandon. Uh, Brandon. I uh, can't remember his last name. But the whole point was he made a really valid point um, in that video that just made me think about what you just said. The reason Arnold never missed is because he stuck to the basics and he did it over a long period of time. Right. Same thing with business. Right. So this guy, Brandon, said 
he literally weighed his food over a 20 year time frame. He looks amazing now because he weighed his food every day, every single meal for 20 years. Everybody's not willing to do that. All right. So how does that resonate with everybody watching this right now? Are you willing to pick up the phone and make more phone calls over a long period of time to and actually do the work in order to be able to get the result? Everybody's not willing to do it. So the people that are willing to do it, me, Sam, uh, your business partner, Logan, Pace, and everybody else who's succeeding, we're willing to do it. We're actually doing it versus the person who wants to watch us do it and not get the result. So you got to ask yourself, are you among the 5%, the 10% of people who will do the work or are you just a... Uh, are you just watching on the sidelines? Are you part of the 90%? You know? I love this. So, you know, <laughs> one of my good buddies, uh, his name is Naaman Taylor. Naaman Taylor is an up and coming rising star. He was on, uh, and he, he has his own little community. He's, he's killing it in life. He's doing great. Naaman Taylor has done, he's very fresh in this industry, just I think maybe a few years in, right? Which is relatively still very young. And he's become kind of like a big brother to me in some sense. And Naaman has done over a million dollars in assignments while being a husband. He has a baby. Now, that's, that's, that's amazing in an achievement in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Here's the mm -hmm. thing. And this is why I love people when they have excuses starting out, right? They don't have money. They work at nine to five. Naaman is full time for the U.S. Army. He consistently has to do 24 hour duties where he's in uniform on base for 24 hours. Wow. He runs a mastermind. He's got a rental portfolio, I think, of over 20 properties. He's got a family, and he's done over a million dollars in assignments. Why? It's not because Naaman's the most gifted out there. And I will say he's, he's a special human being. He's a great guy. Um, but it's because even with all that, when he has two hours to execute, he focuses not on CRMs or dialers. He focuses on money-making activities. You do that long enough, that compounds, it compounds, it compounds. You will have success. Sam, man, incredible, incredible podcast, man. This has been, to me, it's one of the most important podcasts that I've done. I've done over 100 so far up to this point. This has been one of the most important podcasts just to train someone's mind that, you know, someone can actually watch, especially if you're brand new. Even if you're in a business, you feel like you're, you know, in a funk a little bit. You know, some, some of us, we... we come to a point in our business where we feel like we're not making progress. This is the podcast, man, for you to watch. It's the mindset. It's the actual doing of the work that changes the game for everyone who wants to succeed in business, period. There's, not, there's no rocket science. There's not a magic pill. There's not a magic list. There's nothing that, you know, that you might hear online. This is, un, this is totally unconventional thinking. And it's just going out there and getting the work done. That's it. It's, it doesn't take a lot of brain power. You just have to do the work, right? So for all, all of our listeners, man, who uh, would like to get in contact with you, I know you have the podcast. You, um, you know, it's the origin story. I'm going to make sure I link that in the description box. But how else, how else can our listeners get in contact with you, bro? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, anyone who's watching, you need to, you actually are required to, I will ask you this. If you slide into my DMs, I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to make sure that you've done it. Um, you need to go watch the origin story episode with this lovely man right here, because it was actually <laughs> one of the favorite ones I've ever had. After you've watched that and gotten a new defined, uh, you know, a redefined meaning and understanding of your why, that's what you, you actually really helped me to clarify what my why is. And that's so important. Mm -hmm. After you guys have done that, Go to Instagram. It's in my name right here. It's Arch Sam Singh. Uh, tell me you guys saw me here. Let's connect. Let's do deals together. A hundred percent. And then I'm literally just going to force you guys to focus on money making activities. But if you do that long enough, I promise you, you will get your first deals. It's it's almost a guarantee. Now I, I literally just released a podcast with his business partner Logan Manzanares. Um, I'm going to make sure I link all, everything we spoke about. You'll either have it up in the cards or any uh, description box if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're just listening to it, 
check the description box. I'll have all of the uh, information in the uh, the show notes uh, for you on you know across the podcast uh, platforms out there. But the whole point is you got to take action, right? I'm gonna make sure you get in contact with uh, Sam. Uh, in addition to that, listen to this episode again. To me, like I said, and, I, and the, I'm not. This is not fluff. This has been one of the most important podcasts you can listen to. And the reason for it is because Sam literally just started his business and he's crushing it right now. Right? He's less than a year in. A lot of you guys are, you, you've been info seekers for, for three, four, five years and you haven't done anything yet. Right? So listen to it again. What did it take for Sam to be able to succeed in a short period of time? He found a mentor and he took action. Two simple things. Two things. Right? Found someone to show him how to do it, and he took action. And the action part is really what changed the game for him, right? Because you can find a mentor and not do anything. I've had that done as well. People come to me, they want mentorship, and then they don't do anything with it. And then it's the mentor's fault, (laughs) right? So don't let it be the mentor's fault because it's never the mentor's fault. It's your fault if you don't do something with the information. That's just being 100% real. Some of us need a smack in our face sometimes, right? Um, but other than that, man, uh, what books would you recommend our listeners, uh, read in order to be able to change their mindset, change their thinking? I love Uh, this. I love this. I love this. I love this. Um, I get, I get asked this question a lot, a lot, right? This is the thing in the entrepreneurial space is what books, um, I'm not a big reader and here's why I got a graduate degree. I've read enough. I've studied enough, right? I focus on money making activities, but there is one book a hundred percent. I have never read this book. I will say that, but I know everything that it's about through and through and the principles in that book changed my life. I actually learned those principles as a collegiate athlete from my tennis coach. And that book is the power of one more by Ed Milet. Mm. There is something so freaking life changing about understanding and seeing that when you are at your limit, when you've got nothing more to give, that more. extra repetition, that extra call, that extra push up, that extra something, you are unlocking a new level of yourself. Strive to always, always, always push yourself to that limit when you have nothing left to give. Find that one more, it will change your life. So, 100% mm-hmm. Power of One More by Ed Milet. Um, that thing's amazing. Now I've I've gone through hundreds and hundreds of books, but I'm not a reader myself. What I do is I, I'm an audio learner, so I gotta listen to them. So I listen to books rather than music while I'm working out. That's my preference, and I do that just to train my mindset. Um, but I can't sit and I'll get bored too quick if I'm sitting and reading a book. But uh, the power of one more great book. Um, I'm gonna make sure I link that in the description box as well. If you had to p- provide our listeners with some last words of advice, what would those words be? Nothing, 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 nothing that you do in this space, nothing that you hope to achieve will happen if you don't first and foremost have clarity in what your goals are. Not in just what your goals are. If you don't have a clear understanding of where you want to be, and also you need to have a clear understanding of what your why is. Mm. For you, I know it's first and foremost your family. It is your family. Then it is all the lives that you know that you can change. That clarity and understanding your why, and then you have a clear understanding of what your goal is. That clarity is irreplaceable. You need to first and foremost have that clarity. Once you do, it is as simple as picking up the phone and starting to dial. Clarity and execution, folks. That's it. Love it, man. Clarity and execution. I think we kind of drilled you guys with that on this call. Just knowing what you want and going for it. Do the work and the rest will come. Great, great episode, man. I'm looking forward to doing many more with you. A lot more stuff coming up. Uh, If you guys want to see Sam again on this podcast, maybe we can talk about a different topic. Let us know in the description box. What would you like to hear from Sam? You know, um, how did he grow his business? How is he scaling it? What has he done? Oof. Maybe at that point, we'll talk about that stuff. Some secret sauce right there. Yeah, exactly. 100% man. we'll do it. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm looking forward to it. If you guys want to see that, let us know in the description box. You know, uh, give us a shout out. Make sure you check Sam out as well. Leave a like on this video if you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. 
And make sure you share, whether you're on the podcast platforms or on YouTube, share this with everybody you know who's looking to get started in business. This is an important episode for anyone to watch. It's going to help you train your mindset. It's been a dope episode. Looking forward to the next one. And I'll see you guys then. Peace.